So, so, welcome back to Mari Tello Reads, where I just read interesting things. We're back with the second tier of the childhood trauma iceberg. If you haven't watched part one, I suggest watching that before getting into this video. And just like last time, if you want to follow along, I'm going to leave a link to the Reddit post with this iceberg in the description below. And with that, grab yourself a drink and a snack, and let's dive right in. Harrowbrin is a supposed Minecraft mob that is in the hostile category. I went over the categories in part one if you need a refresher on the Minecraft mobs. This one apparently seems to have world changing abilities like Steve as well. No one has ever been able to definitely prove that Harrowbrin exists, so we don't know for sure if this mob is real or not. The idea of coming into your Minecraft game to deal with the hostile mob that can alter the world could be worrisome for a child. I am guessing that this entry refers to a PSA about kitchen safety in which a sous chef slips on grease and is drenched from a pot of boiling water. For just a second, you're able to see the skin falling off the chef's face before the screen blacks out. The text, there are no real accidents, pops up on screen. You can hear the panicked kitchen staff in the background trying to help the chef as she's screaming out the whole time. I understand that PSAs are supposed to scare you into being cautious about things, but to watch the skin literally fall off a person's face, even for a second, in my opinion, is going too far. I Feel Fantastic is a classic creepy YouTube video. It has since been taken down, but there are always re-uploads, of course. The video is of a female robot. She's singing over and over, I feel fantastic, hey, hey, hey. And while I'm sure this video was supposed to demonstrate the audio of the robot as, if I believe right, that was a big breakthrough for that time, something just feels off about the video. I believe it has to do with the uncanny valley phenomenon that I mentioned previously in part one. There's also a creepy urban legend that's associated with this video. The creator is said to be a serial killer and the clothing on the robot in these videos are said to be clothing from the ladies that he has unalived. This of course has proven to be false, but like many others, the fact that the creepy story behind the media has proven to be false doesn't make this any less creepy. This is most likely referring to an episode of Tom and Jerry where Tom temporarily takes a visit to hell. I won't go too much more in depth on this one since the entry title sums it up pretty well. I'm not going to elaborate much more when it's right there. However, I will say this, I'm not sure what the animators were thinking of putting something like this in a children's show, but it was very disturbing for a lot of these children. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but Ayaoni was a Japanese horror game released in 2008. The game follows the main character Hiroshi and his friends as they explore a supposedly haunted mansion. They find out that this mansion is home of the Ayaoni, which is Blue Demon translated in Japanese. It is depicted as a tall humanoid with a deformed face that chases the player throughout the mansions. There were several puzzles that the player needed to solve in order to escape the Ayaoni and win the game. The picture of the Ayaoni alone is enough to give a child nightmares, but to actually play the game and have this monster chase you around is even more horrifying. This is the animation studio that has worked on shows like Jimmy Neutron and made the Ant Bully movie. I'm guessing that this has to do with the mascot that would appear at the end of the project, Paul. Paul was a three-eyed chimpanzee that was comical, but the appearance did scare some people. It freaked out one of my little sisters as a kid so much that they'd close their eyes as soon as the Jimmy Neutron was over so they didn't have to see him. I always thought that he was kind of cute, but the 3D animation that they used for the projects was already a bit creepy, so I can understand why others found this disturbing. Shrekzercist was a short film from the Shrek Halloween special, Scared Shrekless. In this special, the characters from Shrek have a contest to see who is the bravest, so they go to Lord Farquaad's abandoned castle and take turns telling scary stories. In my opinion, none of them really freaked me out, but the creepiest for a lot of kids was the Shrekzercist. Clearly a parody of The Exorcist, Shrek comes to Mr. Geppetto's house to see Pinocchio acting strange. He is acting as if possessed by the devil, but it is later shown that it was a cricket all along. There's a reason that The Exorcist isn't for kids, so it amazes me that something like this was greenlit for a children's special. Even if it is a Halloween special, there are just some steps that go too far, and I do feel like The Shrekzercist almost crosses that line.
Now I am probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but I've never actually seen Bambi to my recollection in its entirety. I've never really liked movies or shows even as a kid that focus on talking animals. I don't know why, I just don't like them that much. So I know that this is a super traumatic and sad part of the movie for a lot of people because Bambi's mom is shot by a hunter and Bambi walks around the forest calling for his mother. It is a really heartbreaking scene for a kid's movie. I can only think of one that I compare it to which would be Mufasa's death in The Lion King where Simba's begging his deceased father to get up and then cuddles up to his dead body. The feels. This scene in Bambi, however, hits differently, and I think it's because parents may have had to explain to the young child that people kill animals for fun. And that explanation is why I don't go hunting with my dad. I don't even want to dwell too much more on this, so let's just go to the next one before I start crying. The lengths that game developers will go in order to protect their games from piracy or people using cheat codes is amazing. The first thought that comes to mind for me is the creepy cutout in Bendy and the Ink Machine where people use cheats to go in walls and see this like creepy cutout and his sign says something like wondering is a sin. But this one is way creepier. Fun is Infinite is the message that appears in the video game Sonic CD for the Sega Mega Drive on the Sega Genesis. It is rumored that this screen was used as an anti-piracy message on illegal copies. Supposedly there was a cheat where you could access the screen as well. Disturbing music plays with a creepy background and disturbing Sonic heads with the words Fun is Infinite written in Japanese across the image. Obviously a few creepypastas have been written regarding this scene. Seeing this myself was disturbing even as an adult. Maynard the Moose is the mascot used in wine gums ads. For those of you who don't know what wine gums are, it's a candy from the UK that's similar to gumdrops. I think the equivalent candy that I can assume they're like are dots, maybe lifesaver gummies? Anyway, the commercial plays with a man pushing the button to use the elevator, only for the doors to open and reveal Maynard the Moose saying, Chew. 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 Repeatedly. Some circus-like music plays and Maynard's eyes become swirled in the stereotypical hypnotic way. The man is drawn in and is encouraged to keep chewing his wine gums, and while Maynard's antlers are caressing his jaw to encourage chewing. It's really weird and I can see why this creeped a lot of people out. The commercial's creepiness reminded me of the more modern trolley ads. <laughs> oh. In the previous tier, the last thing that we mentioned were the SpongeBob SquarePants close-ups. Well, this is an iconic one. In the episode Wormy, Sandy has to go out of town and has asked SpongeBob and Patrick to pet sit. There's a worm named Wormy that the two automatically become attached to. Wormy metamorphosizes into a butterfly overnight, and SpongeBob and Patrick think that this must be a monster that ate their friend. When Wormy the butterfly is viewed by anyone up close in the show, a creepy real-life butterfly face is shown with loud buzzing that adds to the creepiness of this interaction. I was a child that watched that episode in the early 2000s, and yeah, it definitely made me more scared to approach any flying insect for a few years. FNAF itself is creepy on its own, but the YouTuber Mr. Creepypasta made some audio of the animatronics titled Hidden Lore. The animatronics malfunction and creepy ghost voices are heard in between. I'll play a small amount of one of these videos now. And all, all you young bunnies need to have your, your carrots. Please run. Health is important if you want to live, 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 live. Have a fun and happy children. Fun and happy time. Ready, fast, <laughs> These are very creepy and also very impressive that I took the time to make the videos, but every time I heard these, I just pictured myself walking around in abandoned Freddy Fazbear's with the animatronics still talking but broken. It's not a happy thought, but then again, neither is the FNAF story. One Missed Call is a horror movie from 2008 and is known as one of the worst horror movies ever. It's about a group of people getting voicemails from their future selves that will include details of their death. I'm not familiar with this movie, so I'm not exactly sure why this is on the childhood drama list, since it's a PG-13 movie. Except maybe although the movie is seen as a bad horror movie, a lot of people said that there was still a super creepy feeling to the whole movie. I mean... I know after watching this, I'll never want to have any voicemails after that.
One of my favorite shows on Cartoon Network was Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. For those who never saw this or don't remember the show, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends was about a kid named Mac who had an imaginary friend named Blue who lives at Foster's, which is basically a shelter for imaginary friends. It's run by Madam Foster and her granddaughter Frankie, who take care of the imaginary friends until they are adopted. The show follows the adventures that Mac and Blue have with the other imaginary friends of the home. This entry is referring to an episode where Matt gets a drop of candy into his system at a party. Immediately, he gets a rather disturbing look on his face and he begins going crazy over this massive sugar rush. He's running, screaming, and even takes off his clothes at one point. The climax of that scene is when Max has a soda in one hand and popping rocks of candy in the other. Blue is begging Mac not to eat them, and there's this scene that in my opinion lasts a little too long of Mac with this really creepy laugh before he combines the two together. Don't worry, what you're thinking is gonna happen doesn't happen. He just gets even more crazy. In the show, Mac is usually the logical, cool, collected, responsible character, so to see him act out of control with a dark background of a party is very disturbing. Three Lame Studio is an animator who makes a lot of weird parodies of TV shows, and there's a lot of twerking videos and crossovers. I pray none of you have to ever watch the Donald Trump twerking video. Some things that he makes parodies of include Angry Birds, Teen Titans, Ben 10, The Cleveland Show, and The Simpsons. This, I believe, is on here for the same reason as a couple more videos, like in part one. Like Elsa Gate stuff. These are parodies of popular kids' shows and turning them into something twisted. There's probably going to be more of these as we go through the iceberg. Here's the thing about anything animated, clay or otherwise, these are usually targeted towards kids. So if you make an adult version with this media, chances are you're gonna have kids see this. Kids look at thumbnails, not descriptions, so when they see someone in clay doing something pretty normal, they're going to click on it. Imagine the ones that clicked on the adult clay animations by accident. This one I found the most on YouTube was by a guy named Lee Hardcastle, and they were extremely disturbing. I've been a child and found stuff that I wasn't supposed to watch. And when it is something scary like that, without any heads up, it can really mess up a kid. Kids these days have it from 2017, but us 90s kids had the original Pennywise. My mom was a huge Stephen King fan, so naturally we owned a bunch of the books and movies. Now in the 90s, it was a different time. People were still creeped out by clowns, but they were still pretty common for children to enjoy. So before the clown scares of 2016, if you saw a clown on a movie cover, you'd most likely want to watch it unless it was the 1990s it. In my opinion, the, this version of Pennywise is way scarier than the 2017 version. The 90s movies just seem to be more unhinged compared to what we get now, and that's part of the charm of the original movie, but as a child, it was terrifying. Blitzetta is a character from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. In Snow Peak Ruins, Link and Yetta find the second shard of the Twilight Mirror, but as she stares at it, Yetta becomes possessed by the mirror shard. She begins to twitch, turn to Link, and reveals a terrifying face transformation. Scares like this in kids' games are extremely traumatic for anyone unlucky enough to be affected by them, and Blitzetta is a perfect example of that. I feel like this one needs no further explanation. Freddy's laugh in the Five Nights at Freddy's games are disturbing. Just slow, deep chuckles that you hear every once in a while haunted many kids, including myself, when the game first came out. For some reason, knowing the lore now, the laugh is even more sinister. Who Framed Roger Rabbit was a unique movie for its time, having live action and cartoons combined into a wacky world. Not a lot of movies did that at the time. When Judge Doom reveals that he is a tune, his fake eyes pop out after being flattened by a steamroller. And when this happens, we see a cartoonish red eyes revealed. He inhales some helium and with the terrifying new look, lets out a high-pitched scream. If you weren't expecting it, this would be terrifying to see on TV. On a side note, Christopher Lloyd did an incredible job on this character. I know my first time watching this movie, it gave me nightmares.
This is a creepypasta based on the idea of a lost episode of The Old Mickey Mouse from 1930. In this, Mickey is walking down the street, sad and miserable for what seems like forever, and at the end, he gets home and unalives himself. The film, of course, doesn't exist, but you can find remakes of it on YouTube. The story goes that the film is cursed, and if you watch it, you will eventually unalive yourselves. It's a creepy video with a creepy story, and I personally feel very uneasy watching the remakes of it. This is referring to a Scotland Against Drugs PSA from 1996. We see pictures of a normal boy. After a while, his face starts looking pretty rough, his teeth are rotten, there's bags under his eyes, and he just doesn't look healthy. The narrator begins listing common side effects of doing drugs, and the face begins to morph into something even more terrifying, and it begins to have a melting effect. I don't understand why PSAs have to be so dang scary. I mean, yeah, get your message across, but why traumatize a kid to get your point across, you know? As an adult, it just feels pointless going that extra bit. I have absolutely no clue what this could refer to. I looked this up, I couldn't find much to it. There's a creepy picture that looks fan-made floating around that's pretty terrifying, but there's only been a couple moments where Shy Guy's mask has ever actually come off, and the player's not supposed to see those moments. In Luigi's Mansion, you can accidentally suck off a Shy Guy's mask, but there's just two yellow eyes. And in Mario Power Tennis, Shy Guy trips when running over to Luigi, and if you angle the camera right, you can kind of see what's under the mask, and it's nothing. Maybe that's the creepy part? Shy Guy has no face. I'm not really sure. If there's something I'm missing, please let me know in the comments. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is one crazy ride. All these kids get an opportunity to tour a secret chocolate factory only for them to be horribly injured or disfigured. In my opinion, the entire movie is creepy and it's probably why I don't like chocolate. Yeah, yeah, I don't like talking animal movies and I don't like chocolate. I sound like a fun person. But this not so fun person is making the content that you watch. So let me shamelessly remind you at this time that you've watched this long and you probably like what you see. So why not click that little old subscribe button? And while you're over there, why not click that neato little bell so you're notified when I make new videos? It helps the channel out and lets me know that you want more videos like this. And now that my shameless self promo is done, we can talk about Violet Beauregard. Violet is a skillful, rude, self-centered girl that finds a golden ticket to tour Willy Wonka's factory. Come to think of it, every kid is awful except for Charlie. Guess entitled kids are nothing new. Anyway, according to her, Violet is obsessed with chewing gum. So when she gets the opportunity to try Wonka's three-course meal gum, she snatches the gum from Wonka and tries it herself. Wonka warns her several times to not do it, but she refuses to listen. She gets an appetizer of tomato soup, roast beef, and baked potato for the main course, and for dessert, blueberry pie. But this isn't just a taste of blueberry pie. Violet begins turning, well, violet. She starts inflating like a blueberry, and according to Wonka, if she's not taken to the juicing room quick enough, she'll explode. What a terrifying thing to see as a kid. That would keep me from not chewing gum ever again. I think it fits with the inflation scenes from tier one as well. No, that is not what it is, I checked. No, we're not talking about this again. This is an iceberg about stuff that isn't hint. Ah, that doesn't look like it belongs in Animal Crossing. This bunny looks like a lost pet from the La La Loopsie universe. Coco is a rabbit from Animal Crossing and it only takes a second to figure out why this Missy is on the list. Look how creepy she looks compared to the other villagers, and she is referred to as a normal rabbit. That is not a normal rabbit, first of all. She looks like a bunny voodoo doll. Yeah, this rabbit was staring at me with those lifeless eyes. I'd be creeped out. I don't even play Animal Crossing, but if I did and I saw that, I wouldn't touch the controller for a couple days to ensure that that wasn't a nightmare. This is, like, ridiculously creepy, and I'm not sure what game developers are thinking. We mentioned this earlier in the tier, but Scared Shrekless was a Shrek Halloween special where the gang got together and told scary stories. The whole thing is pretty creepy for a kid. The Shrek Shrekless was definitely the creepiest one, but all of them are pretty scary. One of them, Gingy gets the Muffin Man to make him a partner, but she turns out to be some psycho lady. And there's one that's supposed to be a spoof of Psycho, I guess, but Puss and Donkey are fighting the whole time. 
over how it actually goes, and that one is pretty funny. Minus that one, the rest of the special is pretty spooky and definitely not enjoyed by all children. This, from what I was able to tell, was a YouTube video from Crazy Mario Bros. This was a guy playing with Mario plushies. They react to a 3 a.m. video. Mario gets struck by lightning and falls over after saying that he doesn't believe in all the demons and spirits. Mario is transferred to what I'm guessing is hell. When he wakes up, Mario's eyes are blacked out and he goes on a possessed rampage. Then he randomly wakes up again, but the demons are still trying to take control of him, so Luigi kills him. He comes back to life almost immediately and... That's about it. This currently has 1.9 million views. There's some spooky special effects, but it didn't seem very spooky to me. This was the one thing that I could find on this subject. It wasn't very spooky, if I'm honest, so I'm not exactly sure why this was traumatic for kids. Again, if it's supposed to be something different, please let me know in the comments below. And that was the second tier of the Childhood Trauma Iceberg. If you want to see the rest of the iceberg, please let me know by dropping a like, subscribing to my channel, and hitting that notification bell. I typically post some kind of content almost every single day. If there are any other icebergs that I should check out, leave those in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next video. Goodbye!